knowledge. But the Bible says that he continued to grow. And if you look in that 40th verse, you will see that the Bible said he began to wax strong and he began to grow in wisdom. That's because the power of God was already in his life. The power of God was already shifting him from the manger, from that low spot into ministry, in that area where he uh, already had almighty power. But he went through that process of humanity just like everybody else did. How do I know? Because the Bible says in that same chapter that he had to be circumcised as well. He went through purification. Mommy went through purification. They had to go through that process. And so the Bible says as he grew, he grew strong. As a matter of fact, you remember in the same chapter it says that he was, when he was at the age of 12, the Bible says that as they went to the temple, it, when he went into the temple, mommy and daddy was looking for him, wondering where was he when they approached him. Sort of a little annoyed. You know how it is sometimes when you're fearful of your children getting lost. You know, you know where, where were you? Because the Bible said he was lost for three days. And, and, and so Jesus responds back. Now, he wasn't being cute at the mouth like some of the young people are now. He wasn't talking back like some of the young people do now. He wasn't mouthing back at his parents like some of the young people do now. But, but, but in, in essence, he said, did you not know that I was about my father's business? This is why I say to young people, even at the age of 12, you can be serious about God. You can be real with God. Isn't that right? Even at the age of 12. He had the familiarity of the Father in him, not just from a divine perspective, but from a human perspective too, because the divine perspective of Christ teaches you how to be a good human in Christ and walk upright. That's what that divine, uh, that divine presence rather than a perspective, but that divine presence teaches you how to walk like you ought to walk, live like you ought to live. Isn't that right? So did you not know that I was about my father's business, mommy? Did you not know that I was about my father's uh, uh, business? Did, did you not know that? No, they didn't fully know. Although she was a virgin, carried the baby, sometimes parents are distant from their children. Isn't that right? Sometimes our children are called in ministry, and sometimes, you know what happens? And I know the children have to be disciplined, but sometimes parents are not connected to the ministry. So how can you teach them? You cannot buff it against God whenever God is leading them and taking them into places. Yes, prayerfully, I know you have to do things. But be, you know, be connected so you can see when God is shifting and kind of shift. Because Jesus' time, Jesus time on earth was very, very short. And so the Bible says that he grew and he grew, and, and as a matter of fact, the Bible says in the 52nd verse that he grew uh, in wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. And we must grow wise. So God shifted him from the manger into ministry. was shifting him from the manger into ministry. And so this ministry that he had was going to make some powerful changes. Quickly go with me and I will let you go home and have a Merry Christmas. The ministry was to... One was to revolutionize the world. Things were just not going to be the same. Y'all, when Christ comes in your life, you should not be the same. You should not do the things you used to do. If you're doing them, you need to come on out and get it right. Isn't that right? Christ came. This ministry that he was called into was to revolutionize the whole entire world. What does revolutionize mean? It means to make a complete and basic change. It means to alter drastically or radically. God had to use radical measures to change men. How did he use radical measures? Through his son. It was radical, we know. They were mean. They were cruel. They watch. We watch. We see illustrations. We see pictures. It was radical. It was mean. But God said, I've got to do this thing so that men... Mankind can understand that this just wasn't an ordinary birth. I moved him from the manger into ministry to revolutionize. Two, to recast. Come on here. Come on here. To recast. To cast, it means to cast again or renew. In other words, change the eyesight of men. Change the way you see things. To cast a new vision on the church. To cast a new discipline in the lives of people to cast that that was needed in the lives 
So it meant to improve the form of by redoing. So he had to redo the whole thing. He had to redo everything so that you and I could obtain eternal life. So, three, he had to remodel. Remodeling means to renovate. Come on, y'all. Let's renovate. Let's renovate. Dump some of his stuff. That's why he died. That's why he moved out in ministry. Renovate some of those old ways. Change some of those old laws. Change some of those old standards. Change the way things were. Renovate. It also means to repair. Some of us really need some repair work. We're broken down in our spiritual life. We're broken down in our spirit. We're broken down our insight. We don't have 20-20 vision anymore. We don't see clearly anymore. We don't have the hope that we used to have. But God said, I'm going to send my son so that you can remodel, so that you could be remodeled rather, so that you could be repaired. And as a matter of fact, it means to reshape. You know, I remember when I was about 80 pounds. I was about 80 pounds. Then God gave me a little more weight, and a little more weight, and a little more weight. I do weigh more than 80 pounds. And so, so, so when I watched how he reshaped, you know, as I grew older, reshaped me. I began to see the dynamics of being reshaped, you know. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. come on, y'all, we're just going to make it simple right now. You know, my hair color changed. Yeah, reshaping my, my mind so that I would know that, Mary Jackson, you're getting older. Uh, there's a few little wrinkles, smile wrinkles, that you see there. He, he had to, you know, reshape me, you know, to, to make me understand the dynamics of the change that he was making in my life. And, and, and so I can talk about me, right? You know, I know some of y'all, you covered up and put stuff on it and all that. I understand. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine with that. But, but they for real. They're not covered up. So, so, so that's what he had to do with my spiritual life as well. He had to reshape me, sis. He had to take me and reshape me and make me a better form. Okay, and not only that, he had to rebuild me. He had to rebuild me. He had to take out some of the old, old wood, some of the old things that, that was on the inside, you know, some of the, some of the, the unforgiveness, some of the, you know, the, the, the struggles that I had in life. He had to take out some of that old stuff and actually replace. He, he had to replace it. With, with, with something that was more substantial, something that was more solid. He had to take all of that old stuff, and he's continuing to do that, because you know, every now and then, that old stuff pops up. And so, so he had to take me and rebuild me all over again. He's yet rebuilding me, Brother Deontay, because still there, there are some parts of me that, that still needs to be remodeled. Remark. And then finally, he came to ministry so that he could make reform. Lord, be, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does reform mean? To make better by removing faults. Come on. And defeat. To correct. So, let me talk to you two minutes and I'm going to take my seat. Jesus came to take out all of those faults. To take out all of those failures. To clean up our minds. He moved from the manger into ministry. I'm so glad. My sister, that he revolutionized the world. How did he revolutionize the world? Because the Bible says when he started walking out in ministry, he preached things that leaders didn't like. He preached things that church folk didn't like. He preached things right out of 
the God-breathed word that was in him. He preached to dying men and women. He preached to the rich. He preached to the poor. Yes, he did. From the manger into ministry. Why won't you let God shift you from that juvenile spot and move you on out in the ministry? That's why we're called. He preached whether people liked it or not. He preached so that the blind would receive their sight. He preached that the dog would talk. He preached until dying men and women follow him wherever he went. As a matter of fact, the Bible said they took boats to get to him. How many are really pressed to come to church and do what God wants you to do? They wanted to hear the word of the Lord. Yes, they wanted miracles. Yes, they wanted to be healed physically. But when Jesus began to preach, this is just not about your physical healing. But he said, what about your relationship with me? Because I could heal you and you still walk out and go in those degraded places that I don't want you to go. You remember the man that received the sight, went to the temple after he received his healing. Jesus met him back at the temple and said, wait a minute, my brother. It's not just enough for you to receive your natural sight or the man that was healed of his infirmity and could not walk. And he said, you've got to have relationship. I didn't heal you to go back and do the things that you were doing. I healed you to change your direction. I healed you to change your place. I healed you to change your sight. I healed you to not walk in sin anymore. So he preached and he healed and he set free. God moved him out into ministry because he knew that we were on our way to hell real quick because there were no good things that you and I did. Come on, take a look at yourself in the mirror real good. Look at yourself real good. You don't have a right to look at anybody else cross-eyed. Because how many times, how many times when you look in the mirror and you see the real you, the real, real, real you, and have to talk to the Lord and tell God to get you right. Lord, have mercy. So he renovated, he renovated took out those things he's yet renovating yes 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 and he remodeled some of us are due for some remodeling Lord have mercy you need to smile more you need to be kind more yes you do yes you do that's why he came that's why he came to revolutionize tell you like it is yes he did maybe you don't want to come back but that's all right but he came to fix things set things in order take out your faults take out your failures stop the pity party step up to the plate and face it like a woman face it like a man yes he did he went into ministry but not only that the ministry included some suffering the ministry included some pain don't think you're gonna get by without any pain give me my handkerchief I got to preach and I'm gonna let you go don't think that this is gonna be flowery beds of ease because if Jesus had to suffer, what about you? What about me? You got to suffer a little while down here. Yes, from the manger to ministry. And the Bible said after he left that manger, 
he stepped on out as a child and grew into a man and stood up like a man through all that he had to go through yes he did you remember on the cross and I know this is an Easter but you remember on the cross as those that were standing by just piercing him saying mean things he said father 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 forgive them forgive them they don't have good sense he didn't say that I said that he didn't say that I said that they don't have good sense they are sheep they are sheep and they all have gone astray they're moving in their own way it's okay daddy forgive them because the Bible says back in the book of Genesis when they were building the child Bible the Bible said they kept on building they kept on building they kept on building until God had to intervene and had to stop the show but notice in the text the Bible says that they had the ability to accomplish anything that they put their mind to do that's how good he made man that's how wonderful he made us that's how fearful he made us yes he did so I tell you yes I tell you he revolutionized everything so come on church and let's grow up Lord have mercy let's grow up let's grow up because he did it all he accomplished it all he accomplished it all now let it happen in you let it happen in you let it happen in you let him recast let him cast again 